Hi, I'm Emily and welcome to the Peppermint Knitting Podcast. I hope you're doing really well. I'm really excited for today's video. Instead of a normal podcast episode, I'm going to be sharing everything I knit in 2023. I love watching these videos. I think it's a great way to discover new podcasters and even podcasters I watch regularly, I will still watch their Everything I Knit Roundup videos. I haven't been making videos for too long, so most of what I'm sharing is new to YouTube, and even some of it probably never made it onto Instagram, so I thought it would be really interesting to do a recap and talk about some of the goals that I'd set for myself and whether or not I achieve them. So I've broken everything into four categories. I'm not really a seasonal knitter, so if I was to show everything chronologically, I think it would be jumping all over the place and not flow very well. So we have a sweater category, a socks category, summer knits and accessories. I will also leave timestamps in the video so if you're not interested in one category like you don't care about the socks that I've made because you're not a sock knitter then you can jump ahead into the next category. I'll also be trying on the garments as I go so you can get a feel for how they fit and I will talk about the pattern the yarn that I used, how well it's worn, and whether or not I'd make it again, and if I would, are there any changes that I would make. So let's jump right into things. There's quite a lot to get through, and I'm probably going to get quite warm putting on all of the sweaters, so I'll try not to linger on for too long on each project. So first off, we have my co sweater, and this is designed by Rebecca, also known as the Crea Bayer. So I'll stand up and show off the colorway because that is the main draw of this pattern and what drew me into making it. It's my first ever colorwork sweater, so that was a new technique for me to learn. I knit this in Bendigo Willow Mills Luxury 8 Ply in the color Slate, which is the main color. And the colorwork is knit in a strand of Drops Kid Silk in the color White. And the main strand is a color shifting yarn that I bought from a yarn shop in Tasmania. I think it was specific to that shop. I had the name of the yarn shop on the label, so I don't think it's readily available, but I thought it would look really, really beautiful in a colorwork design. And I'm unsure about the results. You can't really see it. In certain lights, in certain lights you can see the colorwork uh, color changing, but I don't think it's that obvious. Most of the time it just looks like pale pink or white, but yeah, either way, I'm still quite happy with it. I think it looks really good. And because there's quite a high contrast, you can definitely see the colorwork motif. In terms of the main color yarn, I'm not very happy with it. It hasn't worn very well. I haven't worn this a heap and there's quite a lot of pilling, even areas that don't get a lot of wear. Like on the shoulder, there's quite a bit of fluff coming off and I haven't depilled this recently, but yeah, unfortunately it just hasn't worn very well. It also doesn't feel the nicest. It's a little bit squeaky and kind of feels like acrylic almost, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I do like superwash yarns that feel really plump and soft and squishy, and unfortunately this just doesn't meet those criteria for me, so I'm not sure if I would purchase this again in the future. However, if you're really sensitive to wool and you still want to use a natural fibre, I think this could be a good choice. So because I used a DK yarn for the main colour and then a fingering with a mohair, I think my gauge was quite thrown off by that. I think I'm also just a tight colorwork knitter as well which I have learned um, this year so that in combination with the two different yarn choices has meant that the sweater doesn't fit the best. You can really see that it bubbles out at the end here and it, it comes in quite close with the colorwork and I can definitely feel on the sleeves that it's tighter here than the rest of the sleeve. So now that I know that I'm definitely make another one with two yarns from the same base to make sure that my gauge wasn't affected and probably go up half a needle size or something for the colorwork sections compared to the main body. I have also gone back and lengthened the sleeves since I finished this and I decided to finish the sleeves with a tubular bind off. All of the finishings are done in two by two ribs. So we did a two by two tubular bind off. To me, it never looks as good as one by one ribbing, but I think I didn't do too bad of a job. I might uh, do some experimenting next year with a bind off that I like the look of on 2x2 ribbing. For the body and the collar, 
I just did a normal bind off. I knit the knits and purled the pearls and I think it still looks okay but it's definitely not my favorite look. I also didn't do the folded neckband as suggested in the pattern. Sometimes I think they look a little bit bulky and too puffy and I don't love the look of them. But because this is 2x2 two two rib, it doesn't have the cleanest edge either. So I'm umming and ahhing about whether I go back and make it a folded collar, but I'll see. I'll have to wait till next winter and wear it a little bit more to make a decision. The next sweater is much more of a success and this is probably one of my most worn sweaters that I made this year. And this is my Lento sweater. I feel like everyone was making a Lento in 2023 and that was for such a good reason. They work up so quickly, the pattern is really easy to follow and understand, and the yardage is very very low so you can splurge a little bit more on the yarn and for this one I definitely did. So I'll come a bit closer and show off the beautiful colours. The speckles are absolutely amazing. The main strand is also from Bendigo Willow Mills in their luxury four ply in the colour snow and I've held this with a strand of Suri lace from Woolen Wax in her fairy bread colourway. I'm so happy with how this sweater turned out. Mainly it's the yarn combination. I have to say the fairy bread Suri is absolutely beautiful. I really love the colours of this and held with just a white yarn really lets all of the speckles and colours show through. I think I do need to give it another wash. I have a feeling that the uh, fluff from the Suri comes a little bit more flat and uh, as I wear it, and I think that hides some of the beautiful colors. So it's not as vibrant as it is when it's freshly washed, but yes, I think it still looks beautiful. You'll notice that this one does have the folded collar and yeah, I think it does look okay. It's just a little bit too bulky, I think. In my next version, I will just do a single folded collar. It also probably needs a little bit of elastic in it because it is coming out to be a little bit wider than when I first finished it. So I think in the next wash, I will add some elastic into the collar. Because this is knit at such a loose gauge, I think it's on six millimeter needles for fingering held with a lace weight. It's really, really airy, loose fabric. So I find that I get a lot of wear out of it. It's really comfortable to wear in my climate. I don't feel too warm when I'm wearing it, but I can always layer it up and wear it in the cooler days as well. Next, we have my bonfire sweater, and this was a test knit that I did for Harris Makes not too long ago. I really love this sweater. I haven't worn it too much yet, but I'm really excited to get a lot of wear out of it when winter comes around. So I knit this in the West Yorkshire Spinners Croft Aran yarn, which is the gray and the purple. I originally ordered a navy blue as well to go instead in place of the cream. When it arrived, I didn't like how the colors looked together. It was a bit more of a royal blue than I was imagining. So I did some emergency stash diving and found this cream color. And I think it was a good choice in the end. So it is a circular color weight yoke and it was super speedy because it's on Aran weight yarn and knit on fairly chunky needles. It went by really, really quickly. The color work is very engaging to knit. You always want to get into the next section, so I find that it goes by really quickly. There's also a little bit of color work on the cuff with the cream color that I think is a nice little detail. I did have to buy another skein of the gray yarn when I was at the end. Because it was a test knit, you're never sure if the yardage requirements are quite right. So I did have to go and buy another skein and it wasn't in the same dye lot. So I did have to blend it a little bit in the body with helical knitting and you can definitely see it. I'm not sure how well it will pick up in this light, but it does have a stripey look from about here down. However, it doesn't bother me too much because I think the main focus that you see when you look at this sweater is the color work. So it's not too noticeable, I don't think. The sleeves are also quite tapered compared to what I had in my mind. I was thinking that I would want a little bit more of a looser sleeve and something a bit oversized that didn't have such a tight cuff. It's a really nice taper. They fit really well, they're not too tight, but I'm not sure if I'll go back and change them. I do think it's a bit more practical if I want to wear this with a coat over or something. And if you have really big sleeves, it's probably a bit annoying having all of that fabric bunching up inside of a coat. 
The testnet process for this one was really, really enjoyable. It was such a pleasure to testnet for Iris and everyone in the chats was really friendly. We had a separate Instagram chat uh, from the main working document, so it was nice to have a separate place to give feedback versus just general discussion as well. I'm not sure if I would make another one. I don't think I need another chunky colorwork sweater in my wardrobe. I do really, really like it and it was a really fun, enjoyable knit. But yeah, I'm really happy with this one, so I don't think I would need to make a second one. Moving on to my next sweater, and this is the zipper sweater by Petite Knit. This is actually the zipper sweater man in the size extra small. I haven't mentioned the sizes of my other sweaters. Usually I'll make the size one or two, depending on the pattern and the designer. I think all of those previous ones have been the second size that I've made. So back onto the zipper sweater, I knit this in Bendigo Willow Mills classic 10 ply yarn. So this is a different base to the other ones that I've made. And I'm also finding the same things in terms of the wear of it, the feel. There's quite a bit of pilling and it's also just not that warm to be honest. My vision for this sweater to was to have something really cozy and warm that I could throw on instead of a coat, I could wear camping, and I just don't think it's fitting that neat in my wardrobe to be honest. I find that it lets a lot of wind through so when I'm outside and it's a bit breezy I can feel all the wind coming through and yeah unfortunately it just hasn't really met the needs that I intended it to. I'm quite happy with the fit of it though. I really like the color. I think it is the charcoal or something. It's a really nice, really deep gray color with some lighter flecks in it. Some random man just yelling walked by. I really love the color of this. I think it's charcoal is the color name, which is a really nice, really deep gray. And there's some lighter bits in there. You can probably really see all of the pilling. There's a lot on the sleeve. To be fair, I haven't deep filled this, so yeah, I should probably do that and stop complaining about it. I don't think I made any modifications to the pattern except for doing the twisted rib instead of the zipper sweater man calls for one by one ribbing, just a standard ribbing. And I really like the look of the twisted rib, so I went through all of the pain of doing that. It wasn't actually too bad, and especially on the cuff and on the hem, it's quite a short ribbing. It was mainly just the collar that took quite a while. It's also quite long compared to my other sweaters. Usually I make things fairly cropped, but this one is a little bit longer. I'm not sure if I like the length. I always find that I'm wanting to tuck it under like this. So I have a feeling if I went back and ripped out a good chunk of it and redid the ribbing to make it sit here, I'd perhaps get a little bit more wear out of it. One final thing is that when I finished this sweater originally and I blocked it, the collar I blocked just straight up and I don't know if it's because this is the zipper sweater man but I found it was way too long and because it was sticking up like this it would never fold and sit nicely and it was just a bit uncomfortable for me to wear so I re-blocked it and folded the collar down like this and it's much more comfortable now. It's still nice and cozy and um, keeps my neck kind of out of the wind but yeah, it's a little bit more comfortable for me to wear. So if you're making the zipper sweater man and you don't have a really long neck, then I would recommend blocking with that. So if you've seen either of my previous two podcast episodes, you would have already seen this. This is my Ara sweater, also by Petite Knit. And I knit this in Drop Sleema in the color Beige Mix. I'm super happy with this. I haven't worn it yet either, but when I tried it on, I really liked the fit of it and the length as well. It's quite a bit more oversized and boxy than I was expecting. The alpaca content in the yarn really uh, opened up and it's quite drapey. The sleeves are nice and long. I can have my hands in it and yeah, it's the perfect length as well. It's not too cropped, but it's also not as long as my zipper sweater is. I really love the construction of this. It's a beautiful saddle shoulder. You can see the saddle here, the really nice sleeve increases, and there's some raglan shaping at the bottom to give a little bit of extra room in the underarm. This does have a double folded collar with the pearl bump edge, which, uh, yeah, not so sure if I like it. I think in this yarn, it does sit quite flat. There is a little bit of a weird bump around here, and it's quite a wide collar as well. When I'm wearing a t-shirt underneath, you can sometimes see the t-shirt poking out here. So I have a feeling if I put some elastic in there and cinch it in a little bit, that might help for the shape, the shape and the fit of it a little bit more. 
So this is another sweater that I'm really looking forward to getting more wear out of as the weather cools down. I really, really like the color of this and I'm hoping next year to make a Agnit cardigan by Petit Knit in a color like this. I think it really suits me and it's something that fits into my wardrobe really well. So perhaps in the next year we will tackle that cardigan as well. This is one of my most worn sweaters along with my Lento sweater from this year and this is the Dear Duomo sweater designed by Semhi Knits and I knit this also in Drops Lima in the color grey or light grey, whichever one of the lighter grey colors of this yarn is. My intention for making this sweater was to replace a store-bought sweater that I had in my wardrobe and it's just made from acrylic so it wasn't wearing very well. Even after I washed it, it never looked as fluffy and nice as it did when I first bought it. So I was excited to be able to knit something to replace it and that's definitely happened. I wear this one so much more than I wore the store-bought sweater it goes very easily into my wardrobe. I really like the color and the fit is absolutely perfect for me. So the sweater is knit bottom up. You cast on the ribbing and knit the body. You split for the front and the back panel, pick up the sleeves and then knit the sleeves down. So it was the first time I knit a bottom up sweater and it was actually an interesting process. I was really worried about the length. I really like being able to try sweaters on as I go and even block them midway through before I bind off on the ribbing just to check that I'm completely happy with it. Obviously for bottom up sweaters, you can't do that as easily. So I really had to trust the pattern and trust my gauge and ensure that it would work out really well. And I'm really glad that I did because I think the length is really, really nice. It's again, not too long, not too cropped and it fits easily into my day to day life. My favorite thing about this pattern is all of the little details that go into it just to elevate the sweater and have something that looks very basic and simple um, just fit that little bit extra better and you can really tell a lot of thought went into the design. I think in the pattern you start with a cabled cast on. I think I did a tubular cast on instead. I'm not sure why I did that. For some reason I thought it would be easier. Um, but I don't think it was, but you know, it still looks really good. It's quite neat and you have a nice line along the bottom. There's also faux seams here, which you are supposed to go back and sew up in the end. I think that gives it a little bit more structure, but I didn't feel like I needed to do that. And I also couldn't really be bothered by the time I'd finished knitting it. So I've left it and I've just never gone back to do it. There's also the faux seams in the sleeve which is in this case just a purl stitch in the beginning of round. I have found that the drop sleeve in this color compared to my Arrow sweater is a lot more stiff. It seems to have a bit more structure than the brown color, which is very interesting. I wasn't expecting that, um, but yeah, just an interesting thing that I've noticed. There's also a really interesting technique for the neckband. You do a crochet chain all the way around the neckline before you pick up and then you pick up through the crochet chain and it gives a really nice sturdy neckline. I haven't put any elastic in this collar and I've worn it a lot, I've washed it a lot and it still fits exactly as when I finished it which is really impressive. It hasn't stretched out at all I don't think. It sits really nice and flat and yeah I'm really happy with that. I think it's a really interesting technique that I should definitely use in other sweaters in the future. Here is a close-up where you can see how neat the neckline is. I'm really impressed with it. That's something that I should definitely start adding into future projects because it was really easy to do. It actually made picking up the neckline stitches much easier. I've also seen Vanessia from The Woolly Worker add this technique into a lot of her sweaters, but she will pick up the stitch in the, the top of the crochet chain stitch and she has a really nice neat line around the um, neckline of her sweaters. So I think both ways still look really nice. Perhaps I'll also give that technique a go. I found that this yarn wears really, really well. There is a little bit of pilling on the underarm and on the sides, but I don't think it's anything outside of what I expected for having an alpaca content in this yarn. Considering how much I wear it as well, I don't think it really pills that badly. I'd love to make another one of these. I did in fact buy the yarn for the Arrow sweater with the intention of making this one again, but for some reason it just wasn't working out. But I think now that I know that the brown color is more drapey, that makes sense as to why my gauge wasn't working out. 
It just seemed that every time I swatched or cast the sweater on, it was turning out really, really big. And I was just worried that it wasn't going to fit the same way that this one does. And I really love the fit of this so much. The sleeves as well are really nice taper. They aren't too tight and I like the longer ribbing as well at the cuff. Overall, I'm just so happy with this sweater. Sungi Nits has also recently released a really nice compound raglan sweater that I'm really tempted to make as well. So this is the last sweater and this is in fact a cardigan and it is the only cardigan that I made this year. I was intending, I had every right intention of making more cardigans but we just never got around to it and that's okay, well, at least we have one of them. This is the Salona cardigan and it is designed by Sophie, also known as the Knit Pearl Girl. So I knit this in the recommended yarn, which is Drops Wish in this really nice dark grey colour. Sophie also recommends holding the main yarn with a strand of silk mohair. I have a feeling it's because the main yarn does peel quite badly, but I really don't like the way that silk mohair feels and it does add quite a bit of cost onto a project. So I just stuck with the main strand of yarn and I'm still really impressed with the wear of the yarn. It's a very chunky, um, loosely spun yarn with alpaca content. So I was expecting this to peel really badly. And to be honest, it hasn't peeled as much as I thought it would. It's definitely not in the best condition compared to when I first finished it. And it definitely does need a good depilling, but it's really not that bad. Here's probably the worst of it on the cuff and on the sleeve. I think because it's quite a fluffy yarn that has a little bit of a halo, it's not as noticeable as a kind of smoother, flatter yarn. So I think that plays into it really well. I knit this in the first size and I did go down a needle size to an eight millimeter needle, but even so, that's still a really chunky knit for me. So this absolutely flew off the needles and it was a really enjoyable knit. I spoke about this in my first podcast episode, so you would have heard me talk about how I don't really like chunky knits over there, but I think the finishing on this has meant that it fits in really nicely with my wardrobe. There's some really nice um, eye cord detail on the cuff and on the hem of the body, and there's a really nice double knit button band. I picked up these really nice black matte buttons to go with the cardigan, and I think it looks really nice. I did end up adding a little bit of extra length than recommended in the pattern. I think maybe an extra buttonhole. I'm really happy with the length of it. It's, um, it's really easy for me to wear at work as well, which is where I mainly wear cardigans, but I actually really like how it looks with nothing underneath. It's not a super low V-neck, so I think I could get away with wearing it like this as well. I haven't styled it like this before, but I actually really like it. I'm not sure if I would make another one, only because I don't know how many chunky cardigans like this I would wear every day. So that wraps up all of the sweaters that I made in 2023 and brings us into the summer knits. So the very first one that I wanted to discuss is something I've spoken about and I think every single podcast episode, but it just comes up in conversation because I wear it so much. And this is my sea salt tea designed by Atelier Castan. And I knit this in BC Garn Bio Balance in the color taupe or mauve. And this is really nice chocolatey brown color. This was my very first test knit, something that I had wanted to try in 2023 was test knitting. And I finally built up the courage to apply for this test knit. I saw the testicle on Instagram and I don't think I even followed the designer at the time, but I absolutely fell in love with the design. It's a really, really beautiful classic silhouette, really nice finishes, and I just went for it. I applied for the test knit. I knew I would make it anyway, so I think I bought the yarn. I ordered it online without even knowing that I was accepted, but I was, and it was a really enjoyable experience. It was really fun. I really liked the group of test knitters that we had. And of course, I absolutely love the finished garment. So here is a close up of the details. It has these really nice folded edges, which I think really elevate the look and a nice uh, picked up and folded over collar. Construction is very interesting. It's a really nice contiguous design with uh, it's the shoulder increases and then you pick up here and do the front. And I can't say enough good things about this. I have plans to make more of them this summer as well. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to having another one in my wardrobe. I have to say the Biobalance is not my favorite yarn. I think it's an organic cotton and wool blend and I do find it a little bit scratchy. It definitely has softened up a lot with washing and wearing. 
So it's just something to keep in mind if you are a little bit more sensitive to wool. In my next version, I don't think I'm going to make any changes. I perhaps would make it a tiny bit longer. I don't think it's too short, but um, I do find sometimes throughout the day I'm pulling it down if I'm not wearing such high-waisted jeans. In keeping with the theme of test knits, this was the second test knit that I did in 2023, and this is the Lily Tank Top by Along Avec Anna. It's a really fun tank top with these bows as the ties. And there's also a little pico hem at the bottom, which I think is really, really cute. I really like that. I knit this in the recommended yarn, which is the Along Avec Anna Merino in the color Colum. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's not the most practical, to be honest. If I'm going to wear a tank top because it's a really hot day, I probably don't want to be wearing 100% wool. So I did think about that when I was making it, but yeah, now we know that probably is not the best idea for the climate that I live in. The test knit group for this one wasn't as active. I think because Anna is a more experienced designer and has more designs that are quite similar to this one, there weren't too many issues for us to pick up in the knit, in the test, but yeah, it was still really enjoyable. I did make a modification or two to this one. When I first knit it, I knit it exactly to pattern and then I just wasn't wearing it. I didn't really like the length of it. It was quite long. It was a full length and went almost to my hips. And for me, when I'm wearing summer tops, I like them to be quite cropped. I'm almost always wearing this pair of high-waisted jeans or another pair of high-waisted jeans. So I was just tucking it in and then you weren't seeing the really nice pico hem, which is what drew me to the pattern in the first place. Because this is knit bottom up, that did mean that I had to undo all of the double knitting ties and all four of the triangles and then rip back the length that I wanted and re-knit all of that. But saying that, I'm glad that I did because I'm much happier with the fit of it now. You can see it's quite cropped, but it still uh, meets the waistband of my trousers. So yeah, I'm happy that I did that in the end. I have to be honest and say that I don't wear this a huge amount. As I mentioned, it's just not practical being that it's 100% wool, but yeah, I really like the overall look of it. I think I also did slightly thinner straps the second time around, and I think I went down another needle size and took off two stitches to have slightly thinner straps. I've also made a second Lily tank top. I had some of this Hobie bamboo yarn in my stash for quite a while and I wasn't sure what to do with it. I didn't have a huge amount but I did have just enough to make this really cute little crop top. So instead of doing the pico hem like in the wool version, this one just has a plain folded hem. I didn't think this yarn would look very nice with the pico edge but yeah I'm glad I did something a little bit different. As you can tell, it's very, very creased. I have it folded as neatly as possible, but it just doesn't look that good. And that's why I haven't worn this at all. I think I might try hanging it up and just hope that it doesn't stretch out too much and lose its shape. But as you can see, it is really flowy and quite oversized compared to my wool one. I've made both of these in the first size. So yeah, it just goes to show how a different fiber can really affect the fit and overall look of a garment. I made the same modification to the straps on this one. I took out two stitches and went down a needle size. And I also ran out of steam in doing the double knitting. So they're quite short compared to the other one. I can still tie them into a bow, so I'm not too worried about it. And the bamboo yarn I anticipated will stretch out a lot more as well. So I didn't want them to be too long. The next summer garment that I finished is my summer secret crop designed by Jessie May Designs. And I knit this in some sock yarn, hand dyed by Dying to Knit, in the colour Semi Precious. And I think this is such a beautiful colour. This is really nice uh, neutral base with these beautiful pink speckles all over it. It's very, very cropped as you can see. So I managed to squeeze this whole crop top out of one 50 gram skein of the fingering, fingering weight yarn. I did have to do a little bit of maths and playing around with the gauge and the needle size to make sure it wasn't really, really loose. Um, but I think I did really well. I'm really proud of myself for using up almost all of the 50 gram skein. I think I had a tiny, tiny nugget left that is probably just sitting somewhere in my stash. Because this is made from a sock yarn, which is mostly wool. I don't really wear this at all during summer, but unlike the Lily tank top made of wool, I do wear this a lot in winter as an extra layering piece. 
yeah, I find it's very, very practical and I would like to make more of these. I don't have too much to add on this one. Jessie Mae's pattern writing is really fun and engaging and it's very easy to follow along. Whilst we're talking about Jessie Mae's designs, it wouldn't be a 2023 roundup without talking about a mini mock neck tank. Everyone I saw was making these and it's definitely what persuaded me to make my own. When it first was launched, I thought, yeah, yeah, that's a nice pattern, but I just couldn't see myself making one. I think because a lot of them had really low neck armholes and quite a high mock neck, but as I saw more people on Instagram and YouTube making them and making some slight modifications, I really wanted to make my own one. So I knit this in Knitting for Olive Merino in the color Purple Artichoke, or Artichoke Purple, I think it's Artichoke Purple, and I'm really happy with it. I have worn it quite a few times and I think because this is 100% merino but it's a light fingering and because it's more covered up here I can wear it on slightly cooler days. This is a good in-between that I find myself reaching for quite a lot. And as I said in the podcast episode where this was a finished object, because it's a lighter fingering weight yarn and my row gauge was a little bit shorter, the armholes turned out pretty much exactly perfect to what I wanted. They're not as low as they are in the pattern photos and the samples, but yeah, it's definitely not uncomfortable. It's not riding up too high and I'm really happy with it. I also did mention about the length in my podcast. I originally had it much longer, like down to here, but it just looked a little bit funny. So I had to go back and make it quite cropped. But that's okay. I still find that I'm wearing it a lot and it's not uncomfortable at all. So I'm really happy with this one. I'd love to make more of these. I think it's a really versatile pattern. It would look really good in hand dyed yarn as well. The neck is finished with a tubular bind off, which is not the most stretchy. So I am really worried every time I put it on, take it off, that I'm gonna snap the bind off. But so far that hasn't happened. Fingers crossed that it can hang on just a little bit longer. If that does happen, I'm not too worried. I can just go back and fix it. I don't think it will take me too long. And because it's such a small amount of ribbing, I can just re-knit the whole thing if I need to. As I was saying earlier, one of my goals for 2023 was colour work and as part of that I knit the Spring Fling designed by the Petite Knitter. This is an absolutely beautiful circular colour work yoke. You can have the option to do long sleeves and make it a sweater or make it a t-shirt. As you can see, I just did the short sleeves, mainly because I just didn't have enough yarn to do long sleeves. I knit this in Drops Baby Merino Hell Double. I had the grey colour from a previous project that I frogged and I thought I could meet gauge using that but it is a sport weight yarn and this does call for DK so I held it double and only just had enough to make the t-shirt. I said before I'm kind of learning that uh, superwash yarn is not the best for colour work. I don't really love how it looks and I think having non superwash yarn just makes colour work look a little bit more seamless and even. I also learned how to add short rows into this. This was the first time I knit a colorwork circular yoke, the bonfire sweater I knit after this one, and I'm really glad I did. It was really nice to learn a new technique and do my own research into that. I have to be completely honest and say I haven't worn this at all. I don't know if that's because it's just too warm in that it's a more than heavier DK, 100% uh, wool t-shirt. I'm not sure how much wear I'll get out of this, and it is also really, really cropped. I wish that it was just a few centimeters longer, maybe an inch or so. Even at the back, you can see it's quite short. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I really, really love the look of it, but it's just not something that I find myself reaching for. It's just quite a thick, heavy fabric that is just a bit too warm for me to wear on warmer days. Perhaps I might be able to block this and gain a little bit of extra length out of it. It's quite a boxy fit, so if I lose a little bit of width, I'm not too concerned about that, but I just find I'm always pulling it down as I try and wear it, so unfortunately I haven't really worn it at all. I definitely love to tackle this project again when I feel ready to. The pattern was really easy to follow and understand. I have really been getting into all of the Petite Knitters designs lately, and I have a few more planned for next year as well. I would definitely choose a yarn that was more appropriate to this, perhaps even just go with the recommended yarn in the pattern just to be safe and know that it would turn out exactly how I want it to. I think from a distance it does look really nice. The only other thing I have to mention is the sleeves do puff out a little bit after the colour work. Again, I think I'm just learning that my colour work tension is quite tight compared to my non-colour work tension. 
So I think for this I did actually go up a needle size in the color work. So I'm still surprised that I'm getting that. Maybe the short rows also have something to do with it. I added the short rows in on the white section before I did the color work, so I don't know how that plays into things. I need to do a little bit more research and maybe, yeah, check that out before I jump into another version. And this brings us to my final summer knit of 2023. And again, another one that I'm sure everyone was making in 2023, and that is the Tulsa Tea by Rebecca, also known as the Craya Bayer. So I knit this in a combination of yarns. Obviously you can see I've added stripes into mine. The cream color yarn is Fury DK Merino Silk. And the brown is some leftover from my sea salt tea, which was knit in BC Yarn Biobalance. This was a super popular pattern for 2023 and for such a good reason. It's a really nice staple t-shirt pattern that you can add your own modifications into. It's knit at quite a loose gauge. I think it was on five millimeter needles and DK weight yarn. So it's nice and flowy and airy. And even though the main yarn is a bit heavier on the wool side, I don't find that it's too warm to wear, even in warmer days, if I'm inside in air conditioning. I think the loose gauge and the drapiness of it just allows a lot of airflow and it's really comfortable to wear. I also have another one of these planned for next year. I did make a slight modification to the neckline in this one. I took out four stitches when I cast on and then knit the ribbing and then increased them out before I started doing the raglan, or well, the short rows in the raglan. And I think I'm glad I did that. It um, has grown out a lot since then. I don't know if that's just my yarn choice um, in combination with the open gauge perhaps, but it grew quite a lot as I was wearing it. I've since added a bit of elastic in there and that's definitely helped bring it back in and is a little bit more comfortable. So for my next version, I think I'll try and bring the neckline in even a little bit more than this one is. This is a perfect length as well. It's one that's not too cropped, but not too long. And yeah, I really like the stripes on it. I think you can see where I've joined the round, especially on this one. I think I did it a bit wrong. I tried to do um, jogless stripes where you pick up and you knit your first round in your contrast color and then do a kind of like a lifted increase, but you knit those together. You pick up the right leg of the stitch below on your left needle and then knit them together. I'm sure there's plenty of more in-depth tutorials on YouTube. The yarn has worn surprisingly well. If you watch my podcast episode, I think I mentioned that I was a little bit worried about how the yarn was going to wear and I thought it was going to pill a lot, but I'm happy to report that it's actually worn really, really well. It's quite soft and it has a little bit of a halo on it, but it's definitely peeling a lot less than I expected. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. I would perhaps even purchase this yarn again. That brings us to the end of my summer knits and I wanna talk about my socks next. I didn't think I was a huge sock knitter, but now I've got the pile here, I can say that I probably am a sock knitter. I have the 52 weeks of socks book, which I received at the end of 2022. So one of my goals was to learn different techniques for making socks. For example, doing toe up socks, different heel constructions, lace, cables, color work. And I definitely got quite a variety in my little pile here. The first pair of socks that I knit in 2023 are the linear socks. And these are from the 52 weeks of socks book. I knit these in dying to knit yarns in her luscious sock base in the color pistachio and I really really love the color of these. Here's a better look of the motif, this beautiful diamond with some one by one cables and twisted rib. It goes all the way down the front of the, the sock and then the back is just plain stockinette. As you can probably tell, this yarn has not worn very well at all. There is a huge amount of pilling and it's slightly faded on the bottom as well, which is a little bit unfortunate. I haven't worn these a huge amount and yeah, they could probably also do with a wash to be honest. I think that might help how they look, but yeah, it's just a shame that I spent so much time making these socks and they don't look the best anymore. It is mainly just on the bottom of the sock to be fair, so when I'm wearing them, you can't really see it too badly. I just think that if I was going to buy more of this base in the future, I would use it for an accessory or something that wouldn't get as much wear as a sock would. I also did Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off for these socks, and there's no ribbing at the top. The pattern on the cables and the twisted rib just continues, so it does flare out a little bit, 
but when they're on they sit really nicely so it's not something that I'm too concerned about. Next up we have my Hollingbourne socks and these are ones that have definitely made it onto the podcast before. These are designed by Charlotte Stone from Stone Knits and this pattern is in 52 weeks of socks as well. I knit these in Drops Nord in this beautiful light pink and grey colour and I'm really really proud of myself for these. They are all over colour work and they took absolutely forever. I knit these ones on 9 inch circulars so I think uh, now that I've knit a pair of socks using longer needles using magic glue that has gone a lot quicker. It was a good learning that doing colour work socks on tiny circulars is probably not the most efficient or comfortable way for me to do them. We also have one sock much bigger than the other. The second sock is slightly longer and slightly wider. It's not something I really notice too much when I'm wearing them, but yeah, you can definitely tell that I was super tense doing the first sock and I was probably knitting really, really tightly. The yarn has worn really well as well. It has um, lots of longer fibers coming off. There's some alpaca in the yarn as well. So I'm really pleased with how it's worn and I'll definitely buy more of this yarn in the future. It's really affordable and even though you only get 50 gram balls, um, yeah, you only need two and it's still a really affordable yarn. That's also why they're different colors because I only had one 50 gram skein of each color. I would have preferred them to both look like this, but either way, I'm still really pleased with them. The next pair of socks is a gift that I haven't actually gifted yet. I still have them and these are my DK Vanilla Socks. This is a pattern by the Crazy Sock Lady and I knit these in some scrap yarn. So the white on the cuff and the toe is uh, a long epic Anna Colombe in her merino which I use for my lily tank top held with a strand of Drops Kid Silk. And then the main colour is West Yorkshire Spinner's Exquisite Four Ply and also held with a strand of Drops Kid Silk in a light pink colour. It was really nice to be able to get some mohair scraps out of my stash for these and they're really really soft because obviously the white is not a sock yarn. I'm hoping that the silk and the mohair combined will give it a little bit more strength and they won't get worn through too quickly. The Exquisite Four Ply is a sock yarn, so at least the majority of the sock has the nylon in the main strand of yarn as well. These are a gift for my mum and I'm really excited to give them to her for her birthday. I think she'll really like them. She's very knit worthy when it comes to socks. She wears them all the time. This is a free pattern by the Crazy Sock Lady, if I hadn't mentioned that already. And yeah, it was really easy to follow. Just a uh, slip stitch heel flap and gusset, which I think fits really nicely on a variety of people have a two by two ribbed cuff and then a standard wedge toe as well. These are my first pair of DK weight socks and they went so quickly. They absolutely flew off the needles. And as I said, it's really nice to get some scrap yarn out of my stash. So I think for the next year, I will definitely be making more DK socks. And once we're on the subject of gift knits, these two pairs of socks are also a gift. These have been mentioned about a hundred times on my channel already, but they are both the broken record, broken rib socks designed by uh, Left Sock Best Sock is her username on Instagram and both of these are knit in some Circus Tonic handmade yarn. So the purple is in the colour Vanilla Lily and it's absolutely beautiful. I really love the purples and the mauves in this yarn and the blue colour is called Spangled Drongo which is this really nice tonal blue colour. This is the first time I knit Broken Rib and I really enjoy doing it. I've seen a lot of garments, especially summer tops in broken rib. So I think that's something I would like to add to my goals for next year. A similar pair of socks that I've actually made for myself are these ones. These are just a standard uh, three by one ribbed sock. There's no broken rib in these ones. I'm not sure if I followed a pattern for these. I have a feeling I just made it up as I was going along, but the yarn is the star of the show in this. This is also from Circus Tonic Handmade and is the Galar colorway. If you're not from Australia and you don't know what a pink and grey Galar is, they're really, really cute birds. They're native. I don't know if they're native to WA, but they're definitely native birds here. They're really loud. They're really annoying. They're always jumping around in the road and causing chaos, but they're really, really cute. So I just had to get this color when I saw it in my local yarn shop. I also knit these socks when we were in South Australia, which is where Surface Tonic Handmade is based. So it was really nice. I have good memories of 
walking around the city and working on these socks. There is a slight bit of pilling on the heel of this one, but I have to say in comparison to the Dying to Knit Bays, I do think these have worn a little bit better. There's less fading and I've probably worn these more often than the other ones to be honest. Yeah, just something for me to keep in mind when I'm purchasing more sock yarn in the future. Whilst I was in South Australia, we did make it out to Yarn Trader, which is a beautiful yarn shop in Port Adelaide. And whilst I was there, I picked up a skein of their hand dyed sock yarn, their in-house sock yarn in the color Tea in the Garden. And with that skein, I made these January socks. They are absolutely beautiful. I think they're really cute with the ruffle. It's a really nice lacy ruffle. And I think it's really, really cute, especially in this really nice speckled colorway. I really like the colors on this one. I think I had the pattern for these for quite a while and I just never got around to knitting them up and it was really really fun. They went so quickly because there's no ribbing or anything in there. You knit a tube, you start with a provisional cast on, knit the main sock as a German shawl heel which I don't think I had done before this sock and then you go back and knit inside out to do the cuff and the really cute little lace detail at the top. Because there's no ribbing, they do have a tendency to slip down a little bit when I'm wearing them. They don't have a particularly long leg. I might have even added a little bit more length onto the leg. I can't remember now, but they do look a little bit longer than what I'm thinking the pattern sample photos look like. So if you're someone who has particularly small legs, I would recommend going down a needle size or down a size in the pattern just to make sure that they aren't going to be sliding around too much. These neck socks are ones that I don't think I've ever worn, but they are really, really fun. And these are a huge sock tube that I made into a pair of socks. So this yarn is the remains of the color fading yarn that I knit my Kerr sweater out of. And here you can really get a picture for all of the beautiful colors and how it fades. It definitely shows off a lot better in these socks than it does when paired with the mohair, unfortunately. But yeah, I think these are so fun. They are so long, so I don't really get much wear out of them. And because I wasn't expecting them to be so long, they are a little bit tight on my upper legs. So when I do wear them, I think I'll have to have them scrunched down a little bit. So to make these ones, I cast on with the 2x2 two two ribbing in the blue and then I just knit and knit and knit until I got to the end of the skein. I then did the ribbing on this sock. So this one is a bind off which is why it's a little bit more flared than the cast on edge. And then I cut the tube in half. I added in the toes and then I cut in and did some afterthought heels. I've made a few sock tubes before and did quite a few this year, but I thought this is the only interesting pair to share. I find it's a good way to use up all of the yarn that you have, um, but yeah, it is a little bit tedious trying to add in the heels and the toes. I find that I like doing all of the knitting in the round and just keep going, but if I don't immediately then go in and add in the toes and the heels, I can just let them linger for a really long time. So yeah, it's also a bit annoying when you have to then find the contrast colors as well. I think I did quite well with the pink and the blue. I think it looks really nice. This is my final pair of socks and also another pair from the 52 weeks of socks. And these are the Una socks. These are really beautiful lace sock and the first time I had done lace knitting. I remember these taking me a really long time. I think they took about three months to knit, which for socks is quite a while for me. I don't think I was working on them very regularly and the lace also was a little bit arduous. Up until recently, I've only ever knit socks on small nine inch circulars. And I think having really small needle tips and trying to do yarn overs and the decreases just took a little bit more effort than maybe if I'd done them on Magic Loop. But I, I find if I do Magic Loop, it's really easy for me to get ladders and socks. And I thought if it's next to one of the lace motifs, that would look really weird. So either way, I'm really happy with them. Um, I think they look really beautiful and I really love the color of them. The yarn is from Cola Girl Yarns or Cola Girl and is in the color Primrose and is on their sock base. This is the only time I've used yarn from this dyer and it's similar to the Dying to Knit in that it hasn't worn particularly well. 
there's quite a bit of pilling and also quite a bit of fading on the bottom. Again, it is just on the bottom of the sock, so when you're wearing them, you don't really notice it too much, but it is a bit of a shame because I really love the color of them and I don't want them to fade too much. The other interesting thing about these socks is the heel flap here. There's a bit of a garter ridge on the edge, which I think looks really nice. It's a detail that I haven't done before, so I really like how that looks on these socks and it also made it really easy to pick up stitches on the heel flap. So I've had a lot of fun with knitting socks this year. They're a very easy portable project. It's convenient for me to take around and be knitting when I'm out and about. And yeah, just another fun way to learn new techniques like knitting lace and color work without committing to a huge garment project. I also like that I can buy one skein of hand dyed yarn and make a whole pair of socks out of it. I think it's just a really nice way to use a new yarn that you haven't tried before or support a small indie dyer. So that brings us to our final category and that is my accessories. And the first one that I'll share is my Sophie shawl. I actually made two Sophie shawls this year, so we'll show them off together. This is the first one. This is knit in the leftovers from my curse sweater. I say leftovers, but I had quite a lot left over. I think I had about three of the 200 gram bowls, so I was quite surprised at that. But I held the yarn double for this one and I think it turned out really well. It's really nice and squishy. Again, it does have that slightly acrylic feel to the yarn, but I think for a accessory like this that I'm gonna be wearing around close to my neck, I do want something really nice and soft. Here's the other Sophie shawl that I made and this one is knit in some Noro yarn. It is the Noro Malvinas yarn and it is a really beautiful 100% wool, single ply, quite loosely spun wool. And of course with Noro, all of their colours are spectacular. This is definitely one of their more neutral shades but it still has such an interesting variation in the colour and it worked up really nicely in this project. There's also the classic thickness variation in the yarn. There were some thicker bits that went into some really thin bits. And I think in the garter stitch, it really showcases that feature of the yarn without trying to mask it too much. This Sophie shawl turned out much smaller than the other one that I just showed. I just knit until I've used half of the yarn. I only bought one ball of the Neuro yarn, also from Yarn Trader. And because it was a little bit more pricey, I only really wanted to buy one. I can still wrap it around once, so it's still definitely a practical shawl or scarf to have in my wardrobe. And yeah, it's really, really soft. It's um, definitely feels a little bit more rough. It's not, I don't know how to describe it. It's really soft. I don't find it irritating me at all. Um, but yeah, it's not like a super squishy and soft yarn like the other superwash yarn is. But I really like this one. And yeah, coming around winter, I'm glad that now I'll have two different Sophie shawls. They're really, really fun to knit. I'm not sure if I'll make a third one for myself, but I do think it will be a really good gift for someone special. Next we have something that I'm sure will be in a lot of everything I knit in 2023 videos, and it is a December bow. This is the second one that I've made. The first one is on my Christmas tree and I didn't want to have to take it off and then put it back on and make it look all perfect. So yeah, it looks pretty much the same as this, except it is hot pink and that one is knit in an acrylic held with a mohair. This one is knit in some Drops Lima left over from my dear Duomo sweater, also held with a strand of Drops Kid Silk in white. As you can tell, I have a lot of scraps of Drops Kid Silk. I bought a sweater's quantity before I realized that I hate the feel of it and I would never wear a sweater pan out of it. So I was slowly getting through all of those scraps. This is a really fun project. They're so quick and easy to make. And I really like that this one has a little ribbon that you can hang up. This is a gift for a friend who hasn't come to collect it yet. So if they've forgotten about it, I will quite happily keep it. It's hanging up next to my sock blockers at the moment. I think it looks really cute there. And it's just a really fun festive accessory. Another accessory that's made onto the podcast is this cushion cover. This is a self-drafted pattern knit in linen stitch and it's knit in some mini skeins in the Man of Steel Uruguay Fino yarn. This one was a little bit of an adventure to make. I always follow a pattern and I went broke for this one and it was a little bit stressful, I'm not gonna lie. 
It's not turned out the absolute biggest and I was hoping to maximize my yarn usage, which unfortunately I haven't. I still have quite a bit left over, but it was a really fun process and I do think it still looks quite cute. I like all of the colors together and the way they fade, but yeah, it's a little bit lumpy. I just stuffed it with some polyfill. I made a pillow insert and then put some polyfill in there. So it was also good to get a lot of that out of my stash as well. Next, I have a few beanies to share with you that I knit in 2023. The first one is this brioche hat. This is a free pattern. I think it's by Knit Grammar or something like that. Um, I wasn't a designer I was familiar with, but I wanted a free brioche hat pattern that I could use to practice my brioche. I mentioned earlier that I really want to tackle the Agneet sweater by Petite Knit. So this was a little bit of a dipping my toes into brioche knitting and it went pretty well. I did make a few mistakes, but I can't immediately spot any of them. So that's probably a good thing. I think in hindsight, I should have taken this as an opportunity to learn how to fix mistakes in brioche before tackling a full on cardigan project. But we just have to get to that when we get to the project. This is a little bit big. I haven't blocked this. I knit this in some Heirloom Merino Magic yarn and I knew that it was going to grow a lot when I washed it so I was honestly just too afraid to wash it and block it and have it grow out a huge amount and it'd be way too big to wear. But yeah, it is already a little bit on the bigger side and I thought being brioche it would grow quite a lot as well. Probably eventually it will have to be washed when it just gets a bit sweaty and dirty so maybe I should just block it now and get that over with. Worst case, I would just have to frog it and re-knit the hat. It didn't take too long. It was a bit laborious being brioche and just playing in the round brioche knitting. I did get a little bit over it, so I'm not in a hurry to have to re-knit this at all. Next up, we have a hat that I made for myself, and this is the Vima beanie designed by Vera Valamaki. It's another free hat pattern, and I only really knit this to use up the scraps of the drops wished from my Salono cardigan. I do really like how this one looks. It's quite um, tall, it has a lot of extra fabric at the top, but it does stick up so it doesn't look too weird, I don't think. It's very, very warm. I haven't worn this at all yet, but yeah, if I don't wear it myself, I will gift it on to someone who will. This is just knit in one by one ribbing, and it was really super easy and knit up very, very quickly on such big needles. And I think if you have any scraps of a chunkier yarn like this, it's a really good way to use them up. And the third hat that I made in 2023 was a long with the test knit for the bonfire sweater. This was a addition to the pattern in the test knit. I think it was really fun to have a matching hat to your sweater. It's not something I see myself wearing and I don't love the fit of it. It just sits a little bit funny and the pom-pom is quite heavy as well. And I also think I don't really like the way that single brim hats look. I think I just prefer the look of a folded brim. It fits me really well, so I'm not sure what I'll do with this. I think if I decide I do want to wear it, I will go back and start the decreases much sooner so that it fits a bit more snugly on my head, perhaps. Yeah, I don't really know what we're going to do with this one. This was something that I just knit because everyone else in the test knit was making it. I also think I messed up the order of the colours a little bit. I just copied what I did in the sweater, but I think I should have done this as grey and then maybe this bit as white instead and then kept the middle bit as purple. But also the pom-pom was really fun. It was the first time I'd used one of those plastic pom-pom makers and I think it looks really good. It's very dense and fluffy and actually no bits come out of it, which is kind of what happens usually when I make pom-poms. Another winter accessory that I've knit this year are a pair of fingerless mittens. I really like the look of the penny gloves, but I didn't want to purchase the pattern as I didn't think I would make too many pairs of them. I also didn't have yarn that was suitable for it. I wanted to use the yarn that I had in my stash and it was a DK yarn and I also held it with a mohair. So the main strand is the Heirloom Cozy Comfort in the color Moon and I held it with a strand of Drops Kid Silk in the color Beige and I really love the color of these but as I was saying the Penny Gloves pattern I think is fingering or DK or something and my gauge was just a little bit off so I would have had to done some changing around the pattern anyway if I had bought it. So instead I found this pattern which is a free pattern 
from Pearl Soho called the Essentials Hand Warmer. And I did a little bit of modifications to mimic the penny gloves. I did some reverse stockinette on the top and on the thumb, and then I did a pearl row around here at the wrist. And I really like them. Again, I haven't worn these yet, but they're really soft, they're warm, and I think they'll be quite practical when I want to have my fingers free, but my hands are really cold. I just realized I have a 3rd December bow that I didn't share with the other one that I had mentioned. And this one is a tiny little mini December bow and I have attached it onto a hair tie so I can wear it in my hair. I really wanted to have a December bow that I could wear as a hair accessory, but I think the ones that I'd be making were quite big and I didn't think I would like the look of it or it wouldn't be very practical to wear every day. So I made a really mini version. I think it's really adorable. I'm so happy that it turned out like this. So the yarn I used is two strands of a lace weight acrylic mohair. It's definitely not mohair. I think it's just acrylic yarn that is um, got the halo that looks like mohair. I went down to a 3.25 millimeter needle to make this one. And I also only increased to four fewer stitches than it does in the pattern and knit um, a much shorter length as well. I just kept knitting the length and then folded it up into the bow and see how it was looking before I did the decreases and just kept going until I was happy with how it looked. I'm so pleased with it. Is that not the cutest little bow that you've ever seen? I think it will look really nice in my hair. My plan is to wear this to our wear at Christmas party we have next week. It's not a huge party, it's just um, a lunch that we're having in the middle of the day. So I think it will look really cute and a little bit festive without having to wear a really tacky Christmas t-shirt. I know I'm that person who refuses to buy Christmas t-shirts. I just don't see the point. You wear them once a year and they never look that nice. They're always made of horrible fabric. So this will be me trying to be Christmassy. So we have two more accessories to share and they are both bags from Petite Knit. The first one is my teddy clutch and I don't think this even made it onto Instagram. I knit this in some hand spun boucle yarn that I picked up when we were in South Australia. We were in Handorf, I think, and I found a really small craft shop that had a lot of knitted items, some pottery, and there was also a few skeins of hand spun yarn. There's only one of these um, boucle yarns, but I picked it up without really having a plan for it because I thought it was really unique and it was something I wasn't going to find anywhere else. So if I hold it up close, I'm not sure if you can see, there are specks of pink all throughout the yarn. It is a strand of black and pink spun together and then the boucle is spun throughout that. I'm not a spinner, so I don't know how it is constructed, but I think it's really, really beautiful and it's quite soft as well. I have to admit, knitting with boucle yarn is not the smoothest, most satisfying process. It was a little bit difficult and because I only had limited yarn and obviously the being hand spun, the weight wasn't as precise as the jepard yarn that is used in the teddy clutch. So I did have to do a little bit of ripping back and frogging and changing things here and there to make sure that I would maximize my yarn usage whilst also having um, a pretty decent sized bag. And I think it turned out really well. It's quite a spacious clutch. I can fit my phone, my keys, my wallet, and anything else I need to carry around with me. And yeah, I'm really happy with it. I also inserted a plain black lining. It's just some scrap fabric that I had in my stash. I was expecting there to be some really complicated shaping on the bag to have it fit over the frame but you just knit a bottom and then knit up the sides and then it's really useful in the pattern to know how to attach the lining and all of the hardware like the bag frame and the chain. I think the teddy clutch actually doesn't come with a chain in the original pattern but I definitely wanted to add one so I could have it a bit more practical and have my hands free when I was wearing it. So I decided to go for this gunmetal grey chain. It's not something I'd usually go for, but I think it pairs really nicely with the colour of the bag. I purchased this from Etsy. I think you can buy the bag chains from Petite Knit, but uh, it's a quite a far way for them to come, so I thought I would take a gamble and order these from Etsy. It's not something I get a huge amount of wear out of, it's just more fun accessory that I was excited to use the yarn for. It was a really fun process. It was something very different that I hadn't ever made before. And yeah, it's just a really fun accessory that I can have in my winter wardrobe. 
So we are now at the final accessory that I have to share and that is my Honey Purse also by Petite Knit. This is knit in some leftovers from my Lento sweater. So we have the uh, Bendigo Woolen Mills Luxury 4 ply and the Woolen Works Suri Alpaca in the colour Fairy Bread. I really wanted to use every last scrap of this yarn combination and I really love the look of the yarn in the Honeycomb Brioche. I knit this before, I made one for a friend previously, so I already had the pattern and it has very low yardage requirements, you don't need a lot of yarn. This is the second size in the pattern and even the largest size doesn't use a huge amount of yarn, so it's a good way to use up every last scrap of a special skein of yarn. The zip I also picked up along with the chain for the teddy clutch and it just has the, the nice like brass zipper puller. And inside I just have a plain white lining that you hand sew in at the end. This is not as practical as my teddy clutch, it only just fits my phone in. I don't have a, one of the huge new iPhones, so if you know someone who does have a bigger phone and you want to make them this, I would suggest going for the larger size. Um, but like I mentioned, the yarn usage is still quite low, so you can definitely get away with just using scraps. That was also another fun project to practice my brioche. Because it is honeycomb brioche, it's a little bit different and the construction of the purse is not as straightforward as I thought it was going to be. It's definitely not too complicated, but it's a good challenge for me to tackle. So that wraps up everything I knit in 2023. If you're still with me, thank you so much for watching through to the end. I really hope you enjoyed um, seeing everything that I made this year and hopefully have some inspiration to what you can make for 2024. I do have a few plans brewing in my head. I'm not sure if I'll make a separate video on everything I want to knit for next year or going through my plans and goals. I'll have to have a think and iron them out a little bit more seriously if I do want to share those. But yes, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see what I am getting up to next year, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. I hope that I didn't miss anything important. I try not to linger on too long on any of these projects, so if there was something that I missed out that you're interested in, just send me a message on Instagram at Peppernits or leave a comment and I will get back to you. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day or your evening and I'm glad to have kept you company whilst you're knitting and I hope you take good care of yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!